All right, guys, I'm looking at the new TYT MD 2017. This is a dual band DMR slash analog uh, radio. I've never used or even touched a DMR radio before this one. So we're gonna see if, uh, if an average Joe like me can program the thing and get on the air this time on K6 UDA Radio. So I wanna say thank you to uh, Jason over at uh, Grapevine Amateur Radio and uh, Ham Radio 2.0 for hooking me up with this brand new uh, TYT MD 2017. The first thing I want to talk about is the construction of this radio. This thing feels nice and solid. It feels good in your hand. It's uh, it's built it's built like a brick house. I mean, uh, it is it's very solid, substantial in the hand. Good quality uh, plastic in it. This is a lot like uh, what you would see in a commercial radio because in effect, it is a commercial radio. I really, really like this nice bright color display. That is brilliant. It's easy to read even for, uh, for our older eyes that aren't seeing so hot without the glasses. They have this little trackball here and this thing is touchy like you can't believe. That is touchy, touchy, touchy. I'm not so wild about it because I mean, all you need to do is just, you just touch it a little bit and it spins. But it does make navigation on this radio very easily from band to band and channel to channel. All the buttons on the uh, on the TYT MD uh, 2017 here, there are four programmable. I think well, either four or five programmable buttons on here, user programmable. So you could do a lot of cool things with this radio. You could really customize it for uh, for the way that you like to work. One of the things that I don't like about this, or pretty much, uh, as I understand other DMR radios is the lack of a, uh, of a VFO per se. Even on the famous $30 radio, I can put this into a VFO mode and I can actually dial in a frequency. So say this weekend at field day, uh, our field day chairman picked some oddball frequency that we were gonna operate on amongst ourselves, and it wasn't programmed into this thing. I, I was just able to, to do it, put this thing into VFO mode, plug in that frequency, and lock the radio, and I had a walkie-talkie there amongst ourselves that we could hear all the announcements, and we could, uh, you know, we could talk amongst ourselves. This, on the other hand, I don't see any way to do that. There is no VFO function where I can either key in a frequency or, or any menu setting in here that I could find that I could do it on the fly. Now the speaker on this thing sounds real good and I was able to, uh, and on analog, um, one of my buddies, was able to help me test this thing out and he said it sounded good on his end. So good for TYT on making a good sounding radio on both ends. The retail price of this thing is a tad over $200. Now, I understand that for a DMR radio, that's a little bit on the high side, but it is a dual band DMR radio where most of them are a UHF only. So this gives you the ability to, instead of taking two radios or possibly three radios with you, 
uh, on whatever expedition you're doing, you could take this one and it'll pick up the analog stuff from, a, from an analog repeater or a, uh, or a simplex frequency that you've got programmed in there and you can operate off of that independently from, uh, uh, from the DMR side. Okay, now when I compare this new DMR radio to D-Star, we're going to compare my initial uh, my initial thoughts on DMR versus D-Star. This, the D74, is my favorite handheld radio. It's a tri-band, D-Star, APRS, uh, does it GPS, does it all machine all in one, and I am really, really happy with this. This is much harder to program. When I got into it and I started to look at, uh, at programming features and how to do it, uh, I first, I can't program it under, uh, I can't program it under the Mac OS. I've got to go into uh, Windows and do that. So it's pretty much the same thing here. So that's a wash. This was a lot harder to get going. There's a lot of things in the DMR software that, uh, that are just really, really uh, weird. It's, it's alien to a guy like me who's never used DMR before. This, on the other hand, the D74 and for that matter the, uh, the ID51 are much more intuitive for a ham radio operator to get on the air with. I mean, uh, I could turn this on, I can plug in whatever frequency I want, right from the keypad, I can enter in an offset, a PL tone, and be on the air on any analog repeater that I care to get on. And when it comes to the D-Star side, I can use the I could use the features of this radio or the or the ID51 to find repeaters that are near me D star repeaters that are near me set them up almost effortlessly and changing reflectors uh, is a breeze with this I mean it is pretty much just press and play not so much with the DMR radio uh, in the DMR radio, in the setup software, I have to enter all the talk groups that I want to get to into a contact list, and then some of them have to go into different zone settings, and there's all kinds of stuff that needs to happen before uh, I could get on the air with this thing. Now, I was able to do it. It took me about six hours to... Uh, to program my own code plug and I, I wanted to do this without downloading somebody's code plug and trying to make it work. Let me be honest, I actually did try to download a code plug, an MD380 code plug and program it in here and the radio puked it right out. So I was pretty much forced, because this is a brand new radio, I was pretty much forced to build my own code plug for this radio. So I actually do have uh, several talk groups built in for my open spot. And speaking of that, setting up a DMR radio on the open spot, that was a treat too because there was sections of that software that I had no clue, I, was ne I had never used it before, but it did go together pretty easily. And for all of you guys that, uh, that were holding back on an open spot because you're a D-Star user, hey, uh, software or the firmware version 117 is the new release version it has fixed all those problems. So if you've been holding off on buying that open spot because you wanted to make sure that all the, the hiccups were gone, 
buy it now. When you're talking to somebody on this radio, a subscriber number comes up and that's basically their DMR subscriber number. And that's all you get for identification. Where on the D-Star side, you get their call sign, their name, whatever they want to put in as a message comes across. One of the gurus on DMR that I talked to when I finally got this thing programmed gave me a little insight. He said, look, you take the subscriber numbers or the subscriber base for the area that you want to talk in and you download that and you put it into your code plug and it'll enter it right into the radio. And so everybody in the area that you want to be, that you want to work, will show up in your radio, their name and whatever information comes over there. I don't know if I'm such a big fan of that because that's an extra step and I guess if you're just working in one area, it's fine because it'll give you the names of, of people, but I really, really enjoy having the way that D-Star works and I'm kind of hoping that the DMR folks figure out a way to, uh, <clears throat> to include that kind of information in a future edition of DMR. Kind of weird, it's a different way of thinking. Maybe I'll get used to it. I'm gonna play with this some more. I'm gonna give a complete review of this radio uh, after I've had time to play with it. But I just got it. As you can see by my shirt, I just got back from uh, field day. That was this last weekend. And this year, uh, my local club, the uh, Sierra Foothills, club we did field day up in nyack california which is right up at the top of the summit right before you start sliding down into Truckee and the reno area we kind of did it a little bit differently this year we kind of did a little more experimentation and we weren't worried so much about collecting points uh, we just wanted to get people on the air and have a good time so it was pretty liberal with the radios that we used and, and kind of the things that we did. Uh, one of the things that we did do that, uh, that I was part of was we, we did uh, what we called prepper food tasting. And uh, if you guys are like Aries members or Racy's or you get out uh, on your own out there, uh, you know that being prepared for a disaster, which is a big part of this whole activity, as some of you like to call it, not a hobby, but um, you need to be prepared. You need to carry your water, your food, your, your all your own essentials. And so we went out and we kind of did a little demonstration of stuff that you could be carrying, stuff that you should be carrying and because everybody goes out and buys all that mountain house food and MREs and survival tablets and everything and you put it away and you never eat the stuff we decided to give everybody up there at field day a little taste of what this stuff actually tastes like how good is it one of our members uh, Gary KC3PO uh, he's a big six meter guy and uh, as you could see, six meters was asleep, as was Gary. Because six meters is that good today. We're in the vlog. So before I left, MFJ just happened to send me this little uh, MFJ 849. This is a digital SWR slash power meter. And uh, it does HF and UHF, VHF. So this is a really, really versatile thing. And this was a, actually a very big hit up, uh, up at field day. Everybody was asking about it. Everybody wanted to operate the couple of stations that we hooked this thing up to and let it fly. Now, 169 bucks may seem a little bit on the pricey side for... Uh, a, uh, for an SWR slash power meter. But being digital, 
This thing is lightning fast. It gives you your forward power, your SWR, and your reflected power. And reflected power is a very important component in the overall signal that you're putting out. Because the higher the SWR, the more the reflected power, which is power that's coming back toward your radio, and it's shutting down the radiated power that you're actually putting out. So being able to tell that and make the adjustments uh, are very, very important. And a lot of the meters that come on the radios don't give you that information. That is very, very important. That's kind of those uh, crossed meter deals. That's what this does, but just digitally. And it's a very nice, big, bright display. I'm real impressed with it. Thank you, MFJ. We're going to do a little bit of giving away. At uh, 7,500 subscribers, I said I was giving away one of my Chameleon P-Loop antennas, and I'm going to do that. But the guys over at Shark RF have graciously said that they were going to kick in and give away an open spot, too. So. Here's the way I've decided it's going to work. Um, I polled my patrons and they decided that, and I said, hey, what would you guys rather have a shot at? An antenna or an open spot? They picked the open spot. So the open spot is going to go to one of my patrons and the Chameleon P-Loop antenna is open to any subscriber to the channel. I'm going to be putting up some, uh, the way we're going to have, it's not so much of an entry because I'm going to just pick somebody, but I'm going to have some qualifiers. And I think what we might have is uh, Qualifiers, I'm going to be on the air on different modes and we're going to see who can make contacts with me. Something cool like that. The Shark RF people, they have now put out, um, let's see, they are up to version 119 in their beta software and 117 is the latest stable firmware for the open spot. So like I said before, if you've been waiting uh, for something to happen with the open spot there, go ahead and hit that order button because uh, uh, it's stable, it's working really good. It, I can now say it, it actually works on DMR. And I can honestly say that now because I used it on DMR and I use it on D-Star and uh, and it works very good. It's very stable now, once again. And the guys over at Shark RF want to let me tell, or wanted me to tell you that if you order direct from them, you're going to get it for the lowest price that you can that you could find one. Uh, let's see. I also want to invite you guys to check out my new channel on uh, motorhome maintenance, travel, and uh, generally having a good time. It'll, it'll be motorhomes, motorcycles, and, uh, and travel stuff. So if you're into having a good time on vacation, check this channel out. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this time. Next time, um, I got myself a new radio, and we're going to have another kind of a shootout but not like you're thinking. Uh, so be sure and hit that subscribe, smash the like, and uh, share this everywhere you can. And if you haven't already checked out my uh, Patreon page, go ahead and check out Patreon. Uh, consider becoming a patron and helping the channel out. And you will, uh, if you're a patron, you'll be able to... Uh, uh, actually be in the running for that free open spot that I'm giving away at 7,500 subscribers. I'm out of here. I'm Bob, K6UDA73.